Welcome to the stream, guys. So, uh, yeah. I hope everything is well with you. I know there's a bit of a delay before you see this, so uh, let me know that the sound and everything is cool. Uh, yeah. Cheers once again. All right. Welcome. Short answer, no. And that's pretty much it. All right, stream's over. <laughs> that's it. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, don't have to do the stream anymore. Okay, I'll see you next time. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, hi, video and audio. Good, good, good. Good morning, good morning. Azuka, thank you, Eric, for letting me know. Hope everybody is well. Hope everybody is well. Uh, knowing good is fine. Knowing sound is good. Sounds good. I hear you. Great. Good, 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 good. Cool, cool. Thanks. Give me the thumbs up so that the algorithm likes this video and everybody gets to notice. Okay. Appreciate you joining in. Ah. How would you define fluent? That's a very good question. Do you like practical jokes? Jokes are okay. Um, so it's a piece I found on Quora. And um, do we count? Do we count spoken languages too? Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, Suchi, Suchi K. Sounds fine as video. Good, good, good. So I'm going to jump into this piece I found on Quora. I haven't read it before. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, I'll just wait for a 50, 75 people to join on. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, some moin. Relax, COVID time. So uh, when we get enough people on board, I'm going to get into the subject at hand and then we'll do a little Q&A as usual. Thanks for joining the stream. I hope everything is fantastic with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask them now. Again, if you don't mind, give me some thumbs up. It just sends a, a message to the YouTube algorithm and lets people know about going on, uh, what's going on there. Uh, I gave that thumbs up. I usually do that two seconds in. Hey, hey. All right, cool. I appreciate that. Opinion on Vim, Vim text editor IDEs. I'm a big believer in IDEs. I like all those tools that they provide. It just makes uh, the process of coding that much easier, less buggy code, etc. But a lot of people like Vim. I'm a web developer and still know, don't know a single language fluently. Okay, we'll have to define that. Hello from Poland. Hey, hey Roman, how are you? Tunisia. Wow, wow, very cool. What's your favorite drink? I guess hazelnut coffee now. Thank you for your studio web courses, Steph. I've been learning nonstop since I finished them. Hey, fantastic. Cool. I'm glad, Andrew, that they worked out for you. Uh, the answer could be maybe, but then I think you would have no profession. You would only know how to program. Patrick, how are you, man? Uh, not fantastic with me. Two languages I find, I guess. Five similar syntax languages. Why not? Hey, I want to learn herb development. Any advices? Well, start learning herb, I guess. I don't know much about herbs, so what do you think about Net Maui? I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet. Will it compete with Flutter? Perhaps it will. Oh, yeah, Net Maui is the .NET um, cross-platform. Could be. It depends how good it is. I would have to see. Thoughts on Java? Uh, Java is not going anywhere anytime soon. So I will. hi from Poland. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so we're getting there. We're 35 people. I guess, you know what? Uh, snoozers will be losers, and we'll just jump into the subject at hand. And then we'll come back, we'll do a little bit of Q&A. So let me pull up this piece from Quora. Boom. All right, I guess you guys can see that pretty clear. Okay, good. So I have no idea what's going to happen here. It's, uh, we'll see how it goes. So is there five programmers that know five languages fluently? Of course, I'll give you my two cents. In order to be a solid all-around programmer, you are practically required to know five languages plus tools. Let's see. I don't necessarily agree with that, but anyway. Main programming language, Java.NET, C++, database language, so MySQL, NoSQL, scripting language, Bash, Perl, P, Python, Go, front-end, 
HTML is JS for framework, CSS, mobile language. Okay, so yeah, he's he's mixing up languages with platforms here, but we'll see what people say. Isa Hadar says, I disagree. The programmer that you just described is a jack of all trades programmer. A good programmer is focused on one domain, back end, front end, mobile. No one is expecting one programmer to work on the back end in the morning, front end in the afternoon, a bit of multi platform in the evening, and provide database reports during the weekends. And great programmers have a thing they specialize in, but they also are knowledgeable in everything else. They're, they have a generalized good knowledge of fundamentals, programmers. That's my take on that. Well, let me just read a few more comments, and then I'll give you my take. I have known some great programmers. I think you are talking about specialists. For, for, from my experience, and that of great programmers I have known, the languages they use verge on incidental. Bingo, bingo, bingo. That's exactly it. Once you know two or three languages in any paradigm, a new language is little more than a weekend exercise. Bingo, bingo, bingo. What the great programmers understand is that you use the tool appropriate to the task. Ah, there you go. The tools are not that difficult once you understand how all the tools in the paradigm must work. Those who specialize in a particular application field will know their tools very well and will pick the tool for the task unless, contra, unless contractually required to use specific tools, which constitutes more of an inconvenience than anything. The very best programmers I know are able to move between fields pretty fluently, and given just a moderate amount of experience in a specific field are almost always, uh, are almost indistinguishable from expert specialists. It's all a matter of logic. I don't know about math. It depends on the type of program. Most, most, most programming is not math, by the way. It's all a matter of logic, though. Lots of logic. After all, when it comes to programming, where you find a peculiar specialization that is different is in the design of user interfaces. Okay. There is a level of understanding of ergonomics, of the varying levels of understanding among potential users that verges on being a gift but it's really about programming. I've known such designers who couldn't program well at all, but understood users. And given good specification for an interface, th those great programmers will get the interface written running quickly. It is the rare bird who can design outstanding user interfaces and implement them. But they are also generally pretty darn good programmers, programmers in any case. Uh, this guy knows his stuff. Okay, this guy, Richard Shirtail, I give him five thumbs up. He knows his stuff. That's exactly it, pretty much it. From my uh, decades of experience, um, I agree 100% with that. But we'll see a few more. Uh, we'll read a few other comments to see what's going on here. I am no longer a programmer, but I can and did mentor five programming languages. Uh, C, C Sharp, Java, SQL, Swift. Uh, yes, it is possible for a person to be fluent in five programming languages, but don't expect any ordinary programmer to achieve it. All right, so that's, uh, I think this, this one comment which surprised me, which is a great one, this is pretty much it. This is the, basically everything you need to know about software development. Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. Any questions? That's basically what I've been trying to teach for years. Uh, languages don't matter. Uh, the there is an illusion of picking the wrong language because of what that guy just wrote. You can just pivot very easily. Um, there you have it. Any questions or comments? Now that I completed that, let's see what we got here. So what do you think of my uh, my green light? Not bad, eh? <laughs> ah, I want to learn herb development. We did that one. All right, let's go down. Five similar syntax line, why not? It's yeah, it's it's even not even the syntax, it's, it comes down to the fact that the constructs of programming are, are consistent across the languages. An object-oriented programming language, Java, PHP, C sharp, C, Python, uh, JavaScript, uh, ES6, they're all object-oriented. These are the top, I mean they're all in the top ten. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, once you learn OO. OOP, it just transfers very, very seamlessly across the languages. 
the NIM language can use Python, C, C++. So really, if, if I know NIM, I am fluent in NIM, I can utilize C, C++, and Python. If I'm fluent in JS, I think I would be, make a total of five languages. So there you go, Blaine. Hello, hi from Portugal. Andre Pina, thanks for joining the stream. What are your opinions on Blazor pages? I've never used them, so I don't have an opinion. Hey, Stefan, thank you for all your teaching. Looking forward to learn some more. Oh, great. Thanks for joining my stream. By the way, if you like the stream, give me a best, give me a thumbs up on the, uh, it's just good for the Google algorithm. I never asked before, but I'm starting to ask now because I know it's automatic. The, the, cert, the Google engine said, oh, these guys are thumbing up. This video must be good. So, uh, I'm a glutton for viewers. What's the best testing framework for React.js? I couldn't say, dude. Couldn't say. Hi from Haiti. Hello from Canada. Thanks for joining the stream. What is the first language I should learn as a beginner? I say learn the web stack because it gives you the most flexibility. So that means HTML5, then CSS3, then JavaScript. From there, you'll be able to make some decisions. So that's my suggestion to you in that regard. Uh, yeah, what else do we got going on here? Let's see. Uh, okay, okay. All right, let's go down some more. Uh, Rust is not a weekend exercise. Yeah, I haven't used Rust. I heard it's a bit complex there. What can I, what can you suggest for project ideas that could demonstrate my backend skills? I always tell people, Mr. Jabbar, I think I said that right, Abraham. I would suggest that you go out there and find some small company who need to get some work done and offer to do the work, a little projects for free. And, you know, whether it be implementing a shopping cart or whatnot, um, whatever. Uh, that's how you're going to really show some skills, working on real stuff. Hello, I've been coding for three years now, and it's in the senior high school curriculum. Does that give me an edge when studying computer science? 100%. The more lines of code you write, the more of an edge you have. I've studied Java, C Sharp, HTML, CSS, JS, SQL, and mobile dev. Very cool, man. Very cool. Keep at it, dude. You got a you got a nice uh, nice advantage there. Newcomer are having problems finding jobs in Canada, Montreal. Well, it depends. Um, there could be a language issue because Montreal is a French city. So if you don't know French, that might be difficult for you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I always thought comparing languages is like comparing tools from a toolbox. Like you wouldn't find a conversation about, is a wrench better than a saw or a hammer? Yeah, pretty much. That's it. Winston is uh, so far best comment of the night. That's exactly it. Thumbs up for Winston. Drink for Winston. Mm. Hey, Matthew, how are you, man? Hello, Steph. Thanks for the email and enjoyed the imposter video today. I suffer from it bad. Now, nah, don't worry. You're doing good. You're doing good. I saw your code. Keep at it. I don't agree with that. Experts in a certain language know all the little quirks and oddities that exist in that language. Something that I'm learning over the weekend will never get you. No, 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 no. Because you just work through the quirks as you go through. You start writing a code, right? And then you hit a quirk and then you go to Stack Overflow. You go to Google, which will inevitably take you to Stack Overflow and you get your answer to the quirk. Uh, but I understand your point of view, though. I have studied, excuse me, I have started my CS study last year and I, to get a wide perspective in the CS domain. I think this is, is more important as to be fixed on one or two programming languages. Math matters. Math only matters if you're doing math-related programming, which most business programming is not about math. If you're doing AI and maybe game engine development, yes, math matters. But when you're doing most other programming, math is very, very little to do with it. I know, based on my experience going back to the 90s, uh, I don't have much time because of college, so I don't have any portfolio, but how can I find a developer job? How are my chances? I think it's hard to, for me to find a job. Any advice is, yeah, well, what I do is I put up a site, uh, your site, your, your resume site, if you will, make sure it looks good. And then I would just find a couple of little sh little side gigs you can do, you know, five hours a week, that kind of thing. It's important that you can log some real uh, coding hours with real projects. That's what I have my suggestion. Play a little less Apex and maybe try that out. But I know you're busy in college, so this, uh, see what you could do. Pick a language that covers multiple debates. Yeah, the web stack is the most flexible. 
Glow Kusa Main Kaldrikin Should one become a specialist in niche frameworks, languages like Angular, Ruby, since nobody likes them? Thanks, greetings from Costa Rica. For well, first of all, you should not do Ruby. If you know this channel, you should not do Ruby. Just kidding. Um, again, look at the local job market. Look at the job markets and see what's out there. I'm about to put out a video. What do we call the... I forget what I call it now. I have the name here. It's called the uh, Coder's Career Paths video. It's got six po components to it. And it's going to cover all this kind of stuff. That should be coming out in the next couple of days. Uh, hello, San Diego, USA. Pick up a language uh, that can do multiple workloads. Pick another language that is close to the metal for performance when you need it. Learn jazz because web. Uh, opinions on non OOP alternatives, programming languages. I think that's niche stuff. Uh, I can see the arguments for smaller projects where you'd, you'd go procedural. Maybe in certain situations you might go functional, but I haven't done any functional programming myself. OOP is the standard, really, these days for application development, generally speaking. Hi, Stefan. I know C++ is that enough for me? If you can find a job, it's enough for you. Do you think it's beneficial for a developer to have a certification testing like ISTQB? Portfolios are much more important than certifications. And I do provide certification services on Studio Web for schools, in full disclosure, but I still tell you, even though certifications can help, it's the uh, real world experience that you can demonstrate and real world skills that really matter. Uh, my French is very good. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Check out paper.co, paper.co. They're on a hiring spree now, and you should apply to them. Paper.co, Canadian company, Montreal, uh, good friends of mine. Hey, Stefan, are you a fluent French speaker? I'm pretty good at French. Je parle français. C'est pas souvent que je parle le français, mais je parle français. Are you coming out with any new books? No new books, but new uh, course material and content for sure. I'm actually doing an assessment test where I have to develop a multi-threaded wave to MP3 converter with lame encoder statically binded. Man, I learned a lot so far from this. Exactly, you learn by doing things. Don't get caught up in tutorials. Just learn your fundamentals. Just start building things and you research how you're gonna figure out things. Big part of being a developer is being somebody who figures out stuff. It's not like, oh, you're gonna, it's not, it's not like you're gonna enter a job and you're gonna know how to do everything. As you get more and more experience over the years, you're going to be able, okay, I'm going to set up the database, I know how to do this, I know, but there's always going to be areas where you're going to have to figure something out. That's one of the reasons why developers are uh, uh, highly paid. Palash, hello, sir. Is it okay to make clone web app from YouTube tutorials, like watching the video first and coding it without watching, not copy and paste? Is that a correct approach? You could do that. That's a good first step. I would do maybe one like that, maybe two, but then I would, like, once you're able to like build a basic web app, just a basic, you know, a form and, you know, collect form input, uh, validate it, send it to the database, maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, consume an API, uh, Google Maps or something. Then I would do, go out there and start doing real stuff. GraphQL or REST API, which is better? Oof. I think it's, it's batch project specific, man. What I notice is that as soon as I say I'm a newcomer, the discussion gets cold, you know, I receive rejection, email, letter. Yeah, well, that's why I, I, I have my suggested uh, how to get your first job. I, I, I talk about it on a lot of streams where you do the first couple of little projects for free for a small company. That's so you get past that hump. I'll be coming out there with my coder's career path a video, a little mini webinar I'll be giving away soon. I know three languages, not 100% fluent, but I can write functional code in, functioning code in JS, PHP, and Python. Yeah, that's, that's more than enough. Uh, Rev Hunt, you need to do real projects you would use yourself. That's how to impress despite the, of the fact that you are a newcomer. Exactly. Uh, Stefan, your Ruby Juke is, <laughs> that's good. Get to, that's the top joke of the evening so far. Hmm. Uh, but I would say when you never, 
rarely stuck on, upon language quirks. Uh, let's see what he says. Maybe when you're, you, you've done a project with a language, you're fluent. Yeah, pretty much. If you've done a project with a particular language, you're ready to go. Studio Web has all the web certs, exactly. Uh, the web search and studio web serve two processes, uh, two purposes. A is to prove that you know the skills, and B, it's a way for you to test yourself. If you pass a studio web certification, you have enough skill in a particular certification. Oh, by the way, if you like this video, like the stream, please give it a thumbs up so that the Google algorithm, their AI, their, its ears goes up and says, okay, people like this stream. It helps me out, and I would appreciate it. Uh... Let's we'll see what this Mr. Dayton has to say here. We have another type of approach of teaching. Do you feel love for one language or pick it up and go bien le bonsoir? Um, I've had definitely favorite languages. There's no question. Uh, but as I got more and more experience as a developer, I just found myself, I would go into a project totally neutral, vis-a-vis -vis of a language. When I was a junior, I was, I was like, I'm a JavaScript programmer, I'm a Java programmer. And then when I got more experience, I was a programmer. And I had no expectations in terms of what language I would use or frameworks I would use. I would just go in there, assess the project, and then I'd figure out what would be the best language, the best framework, the best libraries to use to execute on the project. And sometimes it would be one I would use often, like a Java or JavaScript, and sometimes it would be some weird stuff. Uh, depending on the need. Uh, I am in college studying computer science. I don't know what career I should go for. What do you recommend? I recommend that you uh, keep studying. I recommend once you uh, get some functional coding skills, go out there and do a little side projects so you get some experience in the real world, and that will help you decide what you would do in your career. Because everybody's different. Some people love getting into the weeds and the details of algorithms and AI and other people like architectural, some people like to do front end. Everybody's different. That sort of makes sense when do you know, you know, well you can never know all the quirks, but you just need to be able to produce something with the language. And when a quirk pops up, you have this thing called Google and you type in the question and Google will probably take you to Stack Overflow these days, which will give you your answer. Uh, Exactly. Solving problem is solve, solve, excuse me, solving problems is the key. Uh, <laughs> yes, QBC1 is correct. Quand tu peux commander de la poutine avec votre langage, vous êtes un programmeur. I said once you're able to order poutine, which is french fries with gravy and cheese, that is a sure sign you're a good programmer. I bet you Python has a module on ordering poutine. Do you think... Do you think CS are completely useless? CS. Do you think CS? Are you saying CS degrees? They're not completely useless. Uh, I was always wonder, if, always so wonderful to see a fluent 169 year old old PHP designer up, up, up and in the house. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Ran. Uh, yes, we do need more thumbs. How many thumbs we got here? Uh, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's not pathetic. It's not bad. I appreciate it. 88. We have 88 viewers. We should have, you know, at least 60, 70, 70 thumbs. That would be nice. You know? <laughs> Approach to complex problems, solving them, be able to disable a big problem, disassemble, disassemble, I think he's trying to say, to smaller ones. These are the core skills. The language is only a tool. I, that's, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Save the life, save the life. I will save the life. I am currently in line to work for Simless Synergy. That's my dream company. They made a tool to control multiple systems with one mouse and keyboard. I already caught attention from the CEO. I'm so proud. Well, congratulations, Rick. Good job. Keep at it. C++ has helped me a lot to not feel constrained. Yeah, well, obviously you got ultimate flexibility with C++, but it will take you about 10,000 years to get anything done. I find it to be useful when doing competitive programming since time complexity matters in that domain. Okay, that's cool. I'm always joking about C++. C++ has its place, no question. 
Uh, I love embedded all that mysterious registers and hidden things. There you go. Everybody's got their thing, you know. I agree that the language is only a tool, but you have to pick a language that you're, you fit you fit your project, yeah, for sure. Like, if you want to develop a game, then you have to develop it in using either C++ or C Sharp. Yeah, for the most part. But uh, I think you can do some game, basic games with Python and JavaScript, depending. Did someone say Putin? I love Putin, Tabarnak. <laughs> Stefan, when I come to California, I'll bring some Putin with me. Uh, what's the most math algorithms you can remember using in your career? Not very much, to be honest with you. How about most software engineering skills apply to? How about most software engineering skills apply to a project? Because I did mostly business apps, mostly in the web space, most of the complexity is architectural. Occasional algorithm, very rare. Uh, more that is more or less um, optimization in terms of uh, database operations, but that's, again, it's more architecture than algorithms. There's an overemphasis in um, algorithms. You know, uh, most business programming is much more about um, system design and clean code and refactoring. Uh, good evening from Florida. Welcome, Kevin. Welcome to the uh, stream. I wish I was in Florida. I was supposed to be in Florida now, but COVID kept me out. That's why I like going to Florida. Yeah, I was talking about CS degrees. How useful do you think they are, Stefan? It depends. It depends on if you're going freelance, small business, eh, don't go into debt. If you want to get a job working in a huge corporation, then the, C, then the CS degree will be helpful. But be careful with that student loan debt if it's costly. Very careful with that. C++ is the tool, not only, not only a tool. That's what she said. In your course available through EMSB in Montreal. Is your course EMS? No, it's not, unfortunately. Dude, I use C to access tight and farm fresh snappers. What do you what about your computer whiz kid? <laughs> I think about getting a night job and seeing if I can work for free for some company a few hours during the day for real world experience. Not sure if people can do that. What do you think? Thanks. Mm, yeah, try. I, I would definitely do that. Or maybe do some small um, small projects, small companies. Do you watch USC? If so, what do you think about Khabib? No matter what moment of... I don't know this other guy. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I haven't watched in a while. Last time I watched Khabib fight is when he, he uh, beat uh, Conor McGregor. I don't pay as close attention to USC as I used to. So I couldn't say about the, those two uh, fighters how well they're going to do. But I would imagine Khabib is the favorite. Uh, I thought he retired, though. Yes, there is, except he, he sucks at Ruby. Okay. I used to make braised rabbit poutine. Oh, very cool. Wow, that's a pretty fancy poutine there. Do you think an engineering degree in CS is required for a better future than a normal developer in terms of salary? No, not at all. Once you got experience, you can hop from all kinds of different jobs. What's, all, what's your all-time favorite movie and TV series? It depends on my mood, you know. One of my favorite movies of all time is um, okay. Hold on, did I get it? here? It is. One of my favorite movies of all time is Scarface, Al Pacino. That's such a great film. I also like um, Lawrence of Arabia. That's a great film. I'm dating myself. There's a lot of good movies out there. Uh, TV series, oh man. The Sopranos, I like The Sopranos a lot. Uh, I don't know. I can't say besides that. What are the best ways to optimize the read and write time in a database? Uh, small uh, selects, small selects, and uh, fine grain, uh, small selects. Write is not a big deal. Read is a big deal. Small selects and a well-designed database structure. Well, write, actually, nah, write is not a big deal. Depending on it, if, if you design your table, it's, it's table design at the end of the day. 
Uh, I feel like embedded is like learning a new language every time you change hardware, all those different circuit implementation and ways of using instruction. It can be exhausting. I've never done embedded, so I believe you. I believe you. Do you think we will eventually be in a world where everyone uses Linux? No, I don't believe so. Uh, so you think CS is useless outside of getting a job in a big corp? I'm talking about here about the content and the skills. No, it will help, but I think you can get those skills pretty easily without having to take a degree. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but it depends on your learning style. If you like that school environment, then do it, you know. Then do it. All right, how are we doing for thumbs? 65, 94. Okay, we're making progress with the thumbs. Not bad. Uh, as I say, give me a thumb up if you like this content. And if you hate this content or you hate my long hair, give me two thumbs down. One, two. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. I made a free website for an animal rescue. That's cool. It's good karma and a good experience, eh? And it helped you get a great job. There you go. David M. Verzo proves my point. Congratulations on the job, by the way. And yeah, doing a... Doing work for like a nonprofit, animal rescue, whatever it is, that's going to give you a lot of goodwill as well. People go, oh, he's such a nice guy, which you are. And at the same time, you gain valuable work experience. That's the key, man. That's the key. It is hard to find a job without a unit degree. Is it hard to find a job? No. It's harder to find a job in a bigger organization, but small, medium-sized business are less concerned about that. They're more concerned about portfolio. Uh, okay, what else do we go? How are we doing for time here? 30 minutes already. Time flies. Thanks for the likes, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. 74. Appreciate it. Is it worth writing Android game in 2021 as most people use phones for social media? Only for social media. Yeah, game development is, is, is like a lottery ticket. You can make a lot of money with games, but boy, is it uh, difficult now because there's just so many games in the app stores, right? And if I were going to design anything where I want to make money, I would target iOS because iOS people tend to be more willing to spend money on stuff. Uh, how hard is to find a job when, when I don't have a resume after college? How can I find some without a resume? Well, that video will be coming out soon. Coders, career paths, and I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to land your first job. Uh, would you agree that the first job is the hardest to get? 100%. Once you crack that first job, the rest becomes much easier. Johnny Cinco Cero. I know English, Spanish, French, Russian, Latin. Oh, and you meant programming languages. There you go. There you go. Hello from Argentina. Hey, man. Welcome to the stream. I was hired as front end with Vue. Very cool. Tomorrow I have my first day of work. Any advice? Show up on time, uh, dress well, uh, be courteous, don't be afraid to ask questions, but don't pester people. And don't worry, it's your first day at work. People are going to expect that you're going to have to get into it. So congratulations on the job, man. Uh, you just need practice, experience, apply theory and projects, and you are pretty much settled even without a degree, which applies to me. I'm totally normal and in not being normal. <laughs> Very good, Rick. I would agree. Let's get the thumbs. Yeah, yeah. You have uh, 102. I'm seeing 95. But yeah, let's go with the thumbs. Let's go, guys. Uh, I am currently learning Node.js. What are your advice? Merci. Oh, je pense que... Just practice, c'est tout. You know, practice, practice. Just keep writing code, you know. Uh, try to do projects. Try to complete little mini projects. That's my thing. Uh, Mr. Robot, how to catch fire are great TV shows. All right. Is PHP edit ready for production or should we wait a little? I always wait for the point ones, you know. I always wait for the point ones and uh, before I jump into anything. I would wait for 8.1 or 8.2. Just to be sure, you know. I think I got a super chat here, so I should answer him. Julianne, well, merci pour le super chat. Thanks for the super chat, dude. What's your favorite programming language and how many hours a day of coding for you? Just curious. My favorite back in the day was Java, although I will not use Java to start anything new now because it's a little verbose. Um, I always recommend, in terms of hardcore, intense programming where you have to focus three to four hours a day, 
or until you start getting a headache, and then you sit back and maybe do some light stuff. Uh, that's my recommendation, because the brain, uh, if you don't know me, I, I, did, I studied psychology in university, so the brain has an optimal ability to do three to four hours of intense work, and then it needs to take a break. Uh, just giving you an opportunity to shamelessly plug your freelance course. I loved it. Oh, thanks. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Well, let me, sh let me, <laughs> okay, let's go. So let me shamelessly self-promote here. There we go. So here's my lizard wizard course. If you want to learn um, how your brain works, this is uh, my last latest course I put out. People really like it. It comes equipped with lading, um, excuse me, lizard dating techniques and tips. Why you want to learn the lizard? The lizard is, a, is your uh, part of your brain. What the gut feelings are here, the subject materials here. So it's pretty good. Uh, lizard, learn how the lizard brain learns, the emotions, how you can calm your lizard brain, uh, how the lizard brain acquires knowledge through association, of course. Lizard dating skills, the power pose, uh, lizard body control, lizard talismans. You learn all of these kind of cool things about your lizard brain. It's, it's a very good course. If you want to it teach you how to communicate better, how to think better, it will help you with anxieties. It's pretty cool. So let me jump into another course. Somebody plugged my freelance course. I have to do it a shameless promotion. So if you want to get to freelancing, here it is, my complete freelancer. Comes with five templates. You want to jump into freelancing, and all, not only does it teach you freelancing, it teaches you uh, project management, you know, Learn about clients, how to ch what to charge per hour, what are three best ways to collect payments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for you buy me a couple of coffees or a glass of wine, you learn uh, you learn how to freelance. That's cool. All right, let me get out of here. Thanks for the, the opportunity to plug. Uh, here we go. Double E CPU says, you need a degree to manage software projects used by corporate government or healthcare system, but not for designing it. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Those are big bureaucracies, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Pokemon, how are you? Just came in. Good evening. Good evening to you. Oh, my God. Matthew speaking French. Did you go to Google Translate for that? Quand vous obtenez le socal, nous devons boire beaucoup de paint. 100%. I'm looking forward to it. How to start software house and what will be the precautions? Uh, so when you're doing, when you're developing, Mr. Alpha Gaming, when you're developing a software house where you're you're basically putting together a team of developers, and you want to go out there and do jobs for various companies, um, I did that. Studio Web originally was a software development house. Studio Web, a web studio, right? I registered that name in 1998. So what I discovered, and it's held to true to. Uh, until today, it holds true until today, is that when you start hiring developers under you, for you to make the same money as you would doing development solo, you need to have 10 people working for you full time. So there's going to be that lag time unless you score some contracts. What I suggest in that situation to maximize the potential for profit is that you got to develop very structured workflows and then if you can, and it's not easier said than done, you try to um, source out clients who have project needs that align with your workflow. So you can manage, uh, so, you, so you can have profitability. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to be profitable because developers who are any good are expensive, right? So I had a friend of mine who had a company, and it was doing about two million bucks a year. And at the end of the year, he said he had about, they would have maybe 50 grand left over. So that's a lot of money burn, right? So keep that in mind. I hope that helps. Uh, how can I change careers into web dev without taking a salary hit? Oof, I don't know how much you make now. Um, depends on the circumstances. Do you have, are you an accountant now or are you a bookkeeper? Do you have professional skills that you could transfer over and then you could specialize? Um, you know, uh, you know, can, are you going to go into freelance where, where you can set it up, where you can hit the ground running? Uh, by the way, your French is good. Daito Deten, est-ce que tu parles français, toi? Hello, from Buenos Aires. Hey, man. How have you been here? Wow, we're doing pretty good. Welcome to the, uh, the, to the stream, guy. 
Okay, let's see what else we got here. All right. Hi, Steph. Good to see and hear from you again. Well, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, good to see you. All right, 102. Fan, fantastic. 84 likes. 99. Uh, two people left. Uh, another opportunity to plug a course in... <laughs> Uh, I like you guys. You guys are great. In one week, I completed your Python course and passed the certification. Hey, good. Highly recommended. It's still no Ruby, though. Okay. Okay, how do I ban this guy? How do I ban this guy? No, I appreciate that. I'm glad you made use of the uh, the Python course. All right, I'm going to shave this week. Where am I going to go to my uh, my course? I got a package, I think, eh? Here it is. Yeah, Python 3 Foundations and Certification Package. So you get both the certification and the course. So uh, you can see uh, my ratings. Uh, there we go. So uh, anyway, yeah, so you can check out a whole bunch of videos on Python and the table of contents right here. I even cover a whole chapter on Python OOP. Learn to build games and stuff. It's a pretty good course. Uh, so it's uh, this is the Python certification and the um, course itself as well. If you just want to get the course without the certification, just go here, Python 3. Same materials, just without certification. Anyway, sorry. Thanks for the opportunity to plug shamelessly. Now, I'm going to plug one other thing. I have a mentoring program. It's about a year old, and I am, haven't been promoting it because... I didn't want to overload myself, but I can take on new mentees now. So if you uh, are interested, check it out. Go to studioweb.com mentoring. This is, you get everything. You get everything. I have all my content, plus all kinds of exclusive content in the mentoring forum. Access to the Zoom meetings, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can check it all out here. Learn more. If you have questions, you know how to reach me. There you go. Enough of a plug. Let's see what else we got for questions. Hamza, he says, do you think you would be able to develop a game engine or try that? Sure, why not? Yeah, not a problem. I don't know if I would because, you know, these days, even the big game companies would just license a game engine. Um, oui, bien sûr, l'ami, mes amitiés, très chers. Thanks for the motivation. Ah, no problem. I'm glad I could help. Keep us in the loop, man. Uh, do I need to learn C++ to become a good programmer? No, you do not. Learn any language and you can become a good programmer, except for Ruby. Um, no, you, even Ruby. Um, I know TypeScript, Rust, C Sharp, Python, and Go fluently. That's five languages. And F Sharp, Visual Base, Scala, a little bit. There you go. Binary Reader is got flexible skills. C++ 14 and C++ 14. All right, cool. Matthew Smith, Python 3 course is what got me into sticking with code. I was going to give it up. Stefan, save me. Hey, I appreciate that, Matthew. Thank you. What's your favorite Marvel character? Whoa, that's good. My favorite Marvel character. Given my haircut, I have to say Thanos right now. I think Thanos is uh, right now, right now. Uh, what's your favorite? Okay, you guys, any of you, uh, are any of you Marvel fans? If you are, just list in the comments your favorite Marvel character. I'm curious to see what other people say. It took me two days to finish JavaScript code for the pig game, Rolling Dice. I learned Dom and it feels great. Any advice for more development? Well, if you don't want to jump into real projects, then maybe learn a little Python. Maybe learn a little PHP or Swift or something. Just experiment around. If you don't want to jump into real projects, that's cool. Congrats, man. Uh, thanks, buddy. Uh, I want to. I want a member of my family becomes a full stack developer. He is faster learners. How much time do you think it's going to take him to learn everything? Well, learn, Pablo, it's not a question of learn everything, but learn enough to be able to start being capable. Um, I've had people do it, go from zero with my material to getting a job within two months. And according to them, beating people with CS degrees. So it's doable in a couple months, entry level, but it could take you much longer depending on who you are and your aptitudes. Everybody's different, you know? 
but I always like to say, whether it takes you two months or six months or a year, who cares, right? As long as you're very, you're very, you know? But I'm talking entry level. When I say two months, I say, you know, you're, start, you're starting, you know? Uh, how about game engine for WASM? Uh, but I don't know, Ruby, ha ha. I'm going to retire from my job, totally unrelated to programming in a few years after 30 years. Wow, congratulations, man. I'm true learned web dev and am considering your course. My question is, should I go into freelance? Um, with your 30 years experience, depending on the type of experience, I don't know what your field was, uh, that might leave you opportunity to become a freelance uh, web developer or developer that specializes in the field that you're just retiring from because you you have an expert domain knowledge in that field then you can apply your new nerd knowledge into that um, my freelance course teaches you much more than freelancing it teaches you about project management and client management the client could be a freelance client or it could be your job it could, excuse me it could be your boss but also teaches you how to manage the projects as well so I, 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 I keep, I got to update the, the title of the course, uh, Freelance and Project Management Course, because that's what it really is. Uh, if you are able to build a game engine, then you must be good at mathematics, are you? I'm terrible at math, but there are libraries for that. You just implement a library. Uh, okay. Being 169 years old, I thought you you would have been Magneto. <laughs> Magneto's cool, yeah, yeah, Magneto's cool. Uh, any tips for beginner? Yeah, code often, code daily, take breaks. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and uh, write the code. Yeah, that's my off the top of my head. Again, I have this Coder Career Paths webinar it's for going to be free i'm coming out with this soon and i'm going to teach you it's going to i'm going to cover that as well miss marvel from the game is so awesome right, there you go wolverine yeah wolverine is cool best front-end framework best back-end framework well we use we use Vue. uh we liked Vue, and we use laravel but they all have their pros and cons you know how to improve logic building Oof, by doing solving problems and maybe you can find a, a basic course on you know basic uh, methodologies if you will in terms of solving logic problems but I, I would um, what I do I, do, I, I, I have to put it down there's a few things I do one of the things I do I like to break things up into smaller components based on use case Deadpool is my fav oh there's cool by signing up Mentoring program, would I need to retake or already completed? Thanks, if No, no, you don't, ha you don't need to take them. They're there. You have everything, to access to all of them and the certifications, plus any new ones. It's for life, by the way. It's for life. You get access for life to the developer, the, the private forum. We got hours of content in there that's exclusive for the mentoring community. And you have access to the community and the bi-weekly Zoom meetings. So you don't have to retake anything. Um, I teach with a 21st century paradigm. So what does that mean? Two things. A, I recognize that people learn at different paces. I learn, I recognize that people have different schedules. So you're not, nobody is forced to learn a particular language or a particular tech at a particular moment in time. It doesn't matter if some people in the mentoring group are on Python, you're on JavaScript or you're on HTML. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it takes you a month to finish JavaScript or six months. It doesn't matter. Right, everybody's got different schedules. That's number one. Um, that's that's the main uh, principle, actually, of uh, modern educational approach. That people learn at their own pace. They do, uh, and they concentrate on what they want to concentrate at the time. So that's off the top of my head. So yeah, doesn't matter. Who's your favorite? Okay, we did it. My favorite Marvel character is Iron Man. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, how much do you cover in your freelance course? Do you cover business, other tax for LLC, or is there another route? Uh, I don't cover business and tax at LLC. You take my entrepreneur course, I get into that a little bit, because every region is different. Like, I don't know where you are in the world. UK tax laws are different from Canada and so on. But I give you basic principles that are universal in that regard. Uh, that's more the entrepreneur course. And there is a combo course that covers both of those, by the way. 
Where is that? I'm going to have to shamelessly sell. You get it all in the mentoring program, but uh, courses, packages. Yes, the Complete Web Entrepreneur. So that it includes the, the freelance course and the entrepreneur course. You can go check it out, see what the modules are. So that's universal across all types of businesses. Uh, I need 10 plus years with C++ to become a capable was my first nine years old. I am a serial killer. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Nightmare clients, Matthew or everybody's bane. <laughs> I was a tele telecommunications field technician. Huh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, freelancing and telecommunications, I don't know. I'm assuming that the telecommunication companies are pretty big. And if that's the case, uh, you might be able to get in on contract work depending on the office. I don't know. But I think... Um, Freelance, I always suggest freelance, but I'm, I'm speaking my book in the, in the sense that I, I haven't worked for anybody since I was 18. Last job I had working for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub, so. And I did a lot of freelance. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, Django, Peach, Django, PHP, or JavaScript, what is your, uh, well, Django is a framework. Uh, so you're thinking Python, PHP, or JavaScript, what, is your, what do you suggest for newbies? I would go with, I don't know, Python. Go with Python. Uh, I am a telecom field tech, actually. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe there are, are there independent contractors in the telecom field, perhaps, small, medium-sized business that you could pr start creating uh, sites for or booking systems for, perhaps. Just, I'm just throwing out ideas. Uh, I've been studying programming for the last two years, and I'm about to graduate from business school this year. Do you think it's possible to get into get into a M computer science? All depends on your marks, dude. I would talk to somebody at the school. How do you define fluency in a programming language when you're capable of building something with it? And you may not know it. You may have to go to Stack Overflow a lot. That's okay. Uh, beginners don't do what I did. Ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. Uh, any chair recommendations? I use uh, Herman Miller Mira chair. The Mira. I think Mira 2 is out now. M -R -M -R -M -I -R -A, M-I-R-A, Mira, by Herman Miller. Um, but you gotta sit in a chair. Another one's very popular is Aaron. They're not cheap though. But I've had this chair for like a decade. No, oh, more than a decade. Like, no, about a decade. Here it is. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's a cool chair. Very comfortable chair. Uh, and it will last for many, many years. Like I said, I've had mine for at least 10 years. So it's, it's fantastic. Uh, okay, let's go on. Sapphire. Sapphire says, what's Sapphire? I'm preparing for my master's thesis in petroleum engineering. I want to work on machine learning in petroleum and there's a lot happening in the major, but I don't know how to implement it. Any ideas? Well, you gotta start with programming language. I would uh, learn Python and then I would get maybe into TensorFlow. Uh, you can do it with JavaScript as well, I believe, which is a Google um, framework for AI. And to take it from there, uh, I'm not an AI person, so uh, I don't have much more beyond that. But yeah, start with the basics. Is it necessary to use a framework like React for web dev? No, it is not necessary at all. Sometimes I heard your voice in my mind. Do your fundamentals. There you go. That's it, because it's true. You, it's, it's doing your fundamentals is nothing unique or revolutionary. A great boxing coach would tell you that. A great jujitsu teacher would tell you that. Uh, good programming teachers will tell you that. Any any skill, it's all about the basics. At the end of the day, when you hear about the professional athletes, what they drill over and over again is the basics, the basics, the basics. When oh, let's see what we got here. When not to use a PHP framework. When your implementation, when your site is super simple, two, three pages max, and that's about it. Uh, 
Do you know any subfields of CS that are currently esoteric, but have potential profitability after the future development? In other words, what can I try to get my hands on early that will explode with value? See, that's a great question, Matthew. Thumbs up on that question. I wish I had that foresight when I was a young lad. Uh, yeah, it's always good if you can find an emerging industry or an emerging technology or emerging niche, then you, you can catch that rising wave, right? Like getting into mobile de development was good when iPhone first came out the first couple of years, two, three years. Now I, it's like, ugh, it's kind of, it's commodity now. But in the early, early days, that was the time to get in. Yeah, you just got to find it, man. I, I couldn't say, um, like, AI off the top of my head, it's still early days. AI implementations. Um, uh, people are still trying to figure out how to use them in business. So if you became like an AI, maybe that might be uh, something to get into. Maybe AR, you know, visualization technologies. Off the top of my head, but you have to look into that. But yeah, that's that's the way of looking at it ultimately. Fortunately, generally speaking, when it comes to software, there's, there's tons of opportunity all over the place. Uh, okay, what else do we got here? How are we doing? Fine. How are we doing? How are we doing? Uh, have you worked with parallel concurrent programming in Java? A long, long time ago, I did threading in Java. A long, long time ago. But this was Java. 1.2 stuff. So I imagine it's much more robust today. What was um, one of my good friends? I asked about threading once. I said, he said, he said, I have one piece of advice about threading. And I go, okay, go. Avoid it if you can. That was back then. I don't know about now. I imagine the multi threaded programming is better. But uh, it was a long, long time ago. It was cool though. I remember I found this great book at the time. It didn't sell much because Java threading was esoteric. I bought this book. It was so well written. Phew, unbelievable. I have four years of experience in Java, but sometimes it's confusing to me whether I should change my domain to data science or ML or AI and use Python or JavaScript. Help me. Um, I would dabble in it before I would make that decision. You know, I think... I think to do data science, I would imagine you have to be a data scientist, but I'm not a data scientist. But ML and AI, try it out, you know, take some free time and play around with AI and TensorFlow and poke around it, see if you like it, you know, and then also check out the, uh, the job market and opportunities, you know. It should be fairly easy for you to pivot if you know Java. So don't worry, man. Don't worry, I think you could do it. I have total confidence in you. Steph, you are a lighthouse in the coding ocean. <laughs> cool. I appreciate that. I was, uh, I'm learning Java and I wanted to know what else you would learn to land entry level job. I was laid off warehouse after 15 years and need guidance. That's Stefan Mischik, Andrew Dever. Okay. You learn your Java. And as I said, again, it's coming out soon. Look for it. I'll, I'll, begin, I'll do an announcement on YouTube. Coders Career Paths webinar. It's going to be free. Um, I'm going to do a big announcement. It's going to be a pretty good video. It's going to talk about all this kind of stuff, um, how to land that entry-level job specifically. That will be out in the next few days. Uh, do you think WebAssembly is the future? Oh, let me click on this again. Do you think WebAssembly is the future of the web platform? If so, should I learn Rust? No, I think it's going to be niche technology. I don't think HTML, CSS, JS is going to be replaced. I'm planning to focus on course, courses for web development, is it good to have a BS in computer science major in software engineering for that? No, not for web development. Web development is all about experience and portfolio. So, um, yeah, you, you know, listen, if you got a BS degree, it will help, but it's, not, it's, it's becoming less and less important. Even Google says that. Uh, Apple and Google, a couple years ago, did a study you can find online where they found that there's there no quality difference between their employees who had a degree or not. Uh, Elon Musk famously said he doesn't care if you even have a high school degree. Uh, Peter Thiel, another billionaire, said the same thing. So especially if you're getting into the web stuff. 
Uh, I'm taking up HTML. I'm taking up HTML5 Foundation course. Loving it so far. Hey, cool. My present score is 10,535. Wow, 49 badges. Very cool, man. Congrats. So he's doing my foundations course in HTML. And uh, Pogi Man's giving me a, a great opportunity to shamelessly self-promote one last time very quickly. So here's the foundation courses. Don't let the cute frog throw you off. There's a lot of knowledge in here. And uh, it teaches you much more than just HTML. It teaches you about the structure of a website and so on. So here it is, HTML Foundations on the store. It's a good group. A lot of me to shamelessly self-promote all the time. <laughs> What makes a successful software product? Two things, great use, three things, great UI, great UX, and a great core functionality that people want. Is Lua still in use in 2021? I don't know, I don't use Lua. Are you still fasting? I do, I do. Now, I, I, this week I've been a slacker faster, but I'm going to step up my fasting because uh, summertime is here and I gotta get, uh, gotta get in trim. What makes a successful software product? Did that one now? What's your opinion on Zutacode? It's part, it could be used as part of the uh, development process. This very quickly, when you start working on your uh, middle layer, which is basically the code layer, I'll, I'll sometimes sketch out some interface code very quickly, I'll jot it down. Just, it's, it's very, you know, it's like, 1% or 2% of the development process, but it's useful. Thanks for all the likes, guys. I appreciate it. 109, 102 likes. Cool. Very good. Uh, front end is kind of messy, like so many frameworks and daily stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, when I start to take Python serious, I begin with one of your courses. All right, cool. When do you see WebXR at the... Where do you see... WebEx are at the moment augmented reality. Early stages, early stages, but that could be opportunity. Uh, Hoa, is this really live? Eddie, why are you surprised? Of course it's live. Uh, I want to learn Python because I want to work with data, but my college is using Java C and PHP. How hard for us to learn Python in addition to the rest? It'll be pretty easy for you because... Um, this, you know, of course, Python has a very significantly different syntax from Java C PHP, but uh, the the concepts are the same. So once you get past the uh, the syntax in Python, you should be fine. It will just it will make you a better coder. Uh, it will make you it would just make you a better coder vis a vis uh, the other languages as well. Uh, ben Askren or Jake Paul? Is that a fight? I think they're fighting each other. I don't know. Do you think VR, Scotty? Do you think VR and AR will be will get huge? I don't know. Maybe I don't think it will be huge, but I think it will get bigger. That's for sure. How do you know when you need a back end for a website or project idea? When you need to store information or when you need to uh, provide functionality that is not implementable through the front end. So if you need to, a shopping cart type of thing, whenever you need to store information after a person leaves the site, so when they come back, then you need it back in. Uh, what are your thoughts on non-fungible tokens? I have, ooh, I don't even know what that is. It must be a, a, a crypto thing, right? Is web development going to die in the next 10 years? No chance. What about blockchain developer? Opportunities there, niche though, but opportunities there. I want to remember to all that internet, do not have 100 years. We can get a lot of fun. We have a lot to create. I want to remember that to all that the internet do not have 100 years. I'm not sure if I understand that. Um, Rick. Arm Brewster says, multi-threaded programming is okay as long as you follow one rule. Winding them up costs times. Make a pool of threads and reuse them instead of winding them up every time you need one. Yeah, yeah, you got to do thread pooling, of course. I agree. Hello, hey, Artur. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. 
Hello from South England. Arturo here. My son can't sleep, and you took, and you two, by a look of it, 1:46 a.m. There. Oh, cool. Well, welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, taking a course and dropping crimp, crimp, uh, cream pies and dropping cream pies. That's it. <laughs> if you were to develop a totally new game engine, would you use Rust or C++? Oh, I don't know. I would have to research that. I would have to look into that. Do you prefer front or back end web development? Personally, actually, personally, I have to tell you, I prefer uh, back end personally. Uh, I, I like I like writing code where um, there's logic involved, thus backend because it works or it doesn't. Whereas design, it's very very subjective, so you can uh, you can go down a rabbit hole there. So, uh, so there are people who know five languages. There are people who do, but not you know you forget. I know many. I've I've written commercial software in eight or nine languages over the years. Ask me to remember them though. No. It, you know, I can get back on the horse very quickly, but you know, being an old timer, I have fluently been using at at a point in time Pascal, Summer, C, C, Plus, Fox, Fox Base. Oh, there you too. Me too. PHP, Java, but these days I only use C plus plus. There you go. Uh, don't let the cute frog throw you off. This is serious business. <laughs> uh, any tips on how to battle my addition to statically typed languages, Java in particular? Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I can understand. It's a, when you when you go with, um, with for, for Python or JavaScript, you just get a lot more productivity. You know, regarding that, Elon Musk quote, go and trying to get hired at one of his companies, what a degree, and see how that goes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just telling you what he says. You know. Do you prefer front end? I got that. Uh, Stefan, have you promoted your PHP Foundations course? My killer piece is still on the top Google searchers. Also, my nephew got my phone. Uh, <laughs> if you got your phone. Do you, Steph, have you promoted a PHP Foundation course? Uh, I, should, I should promote it. Yeah, killer piece is still on the top of the Google searches. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer PHP is one of my websites. Okay, I'll do the same as that. I have a PHP uh, course as well. People like I use my PHP Foundations courses to uh, to teach PHP, but all to teach PHP, but also to teach uh, backend, yeah, form processing, client server model, that kind of stuff. There it is. All right, how are we doing here? What's going on? One o three. The Python course, the Python course is great. Hey, thanks, I appreciate that. Stefan Mishra, I want to focus on Python, but I am com completing your web dev course. How do you maintain taking on multiple language projects? How do you maintain? Well, in software development, you're going to be using multiple languages, and uh, that is not uncommon. Uh, you know, I would suggest trying to discipline yourself to finish one, then go on to the next because. You might confuse concepts here and there, especially if you're learning, but uh, that's up to you, you know. The depth of field makes it look pre-recorded. Ah, okay. Well, it's the camera and the lens. Very cool. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you guys are wondering, he's talking about the how blurry the background is. That's depth of field. Uh, the photography nerds call it bokeh. You can easily learn Python on your own once you learn one language, especially a language like Java. Python will be a breeze. Yeah, pretty much. Is PHP a good backend language to learn to get a junior dev job? Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities there, but I always say look at the local job markets. Thanks for the feedback. I think I will go ahead and start. Uh, oh, hold on. There we go. Thanks for the feedback. I think I will go ahead and start reading the documentation. Yeah, if you're not a code, that's what I typically do. Do you have specializations in Python to recommend for freelancing? Do you have specializations in Python? Yeah, web. Uh, Marvin Hagler died. He was one of my top five. Yeah, he was a great boxer, Hagler. He took the, apparently, I don't know if it's true, but his wife said reportedly that he took a vaccine and he was, the vaccine killed him. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, yeah, he was one of the best boxers of all time. Uh, 
he had a really great style, a very energy energy efficient style. He was great. Uh, doesn't exist for a hundred years is what he says. Doesn't exist. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, the web is still quite new. I started learning programming when I was 17. C++ was my first language. Seven years later, I don't regret it all. It was a wonderful journey. Fantastic. Glad, glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, web dev jobs. Is there will be a collapse like the dot-com bubble? The dot-com bubble was short-term, and now it's the web is much bigger now than it ever was. And there's many more jobs than there was. Second edition soon. No, not soon because the first edition is still 100% up to date. You take it, everything in there is still 100% up to date. There's some things I don't cover, but once you do that book or do my courses, uh, my courses are more complete, of course, but you'll learn a heck of a lot in that book. Trust me. Now you can get it for like 14 bucks, so it's, it's a great book. If you're a beginner, well, you read the reviews. Um, what else do we do? How are we doing for time? Okay, oh, an hour. hour and 10 minutes. All right, I'm going to be wrapping things up. How do you know our refactoring code works better than legacy code? How do you know our refactoring code works better than legacy code? Refactoring is just a process of cleaning up code. So you'll be cleaning up legacy code. Of course, you got to be careful about that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what else do we go? Thanks for the thumbs up, Scotty. Appreciate it. Is Python a game or what? Is Python a game or what? Is Python a game or what? I don't know what you mean by that. Don't think so much about language. Think about fundamentals. Yeah, exactly. Uh, looks really good. You like my haircut? Is that it? <laughs> my Thanos cut. Uh, PHP is very beautiful, and I like to see it, see it more logical than JavaScript and server side. No, I, I like, and I like it. I see it more as being more logical. Well, that's why we went with PHP personally. It's a little, the structure is more solid. I haven't looked, that being said, I haven't looked at server side JavaScript in a while. WordPress jobs are huge for freelance, so PHP is a must. Matthew is correct. Uh, ah, Bengali, English, Arabic, Hindi, and French. Ah, very good. Tu parles beaucoup de langage, toi. Uh, Java strictness and structure is satisfying. Yeah, there's, there's certain uh, strongly typed languages do have it, their advantages in that regard. I love shallow depth of field. Yeah, that's how people... Um, Yeah, that's how they discern between pro cameras and a phone. Because the phone, it's hard to get a shallow depth of field, a blurry background, because it's got such a small sensor in there. Whereas the sensor on that camera there is huge, uh, amongst other things. So, yeah. Uh, didn't the white refute the vaccine claim earlier today? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't heard. I just I just cut that headline uh, somewhere. So uh, I'm also invested. It seemed kind of weird. I'm also invested in Python 3 Foundations course. That will be my next learning after I finish HTML5 Foundation. Cool, man. Thanks for picking up the course. Should I learn Scratch? No. Considering Java is primarily used in large companies, does anyone use Java for freelance work as well? I wouldn't use it. It's very too, too verbose and slow. Uh, you might find Java work as a contractor, a freelance contractor, where you go work for a large company temporarily for three months on a project or six months. Uh, but from scratch, freelance, no. Trying to get out my manual labor job into a tech job, can't even get a recruiter to spit in my direction without working on obtaining more skills. Yeah, look out for my coder's career paths uh, little webinar I'm going to come out with soon. Again, for free, and you'll learn all about all what you can do there. Do you have a React course? No, I don't, unfortunately, or fortunately. No, I just, you do my web stack course, and you learn React pretty quickly on your own. Thank you for your time. Well, thanks for joining the stream. I'll be closing this off. It's been over an hour. Hey, it's RJ Camacho. How are you doing, man? Uh, welcome to the party. I got to sleep. Wish you all a great night. All right. Uh, 
Is Scratch good for... <laughs> Uh, green light is not great okay cool cool uh, all right guys that's it thanks for joining the stream uh, <laughs> I appreciate it always a good time I'm going to leave you with my uh, ASMR uh, stream from Maine so if you're a little stressed out uh, watch this AMR, ASMR video from Maine. It's pretty relaxing. So once again, sleep well. Good night.